This novel was possible because of a Patreon member request. So if you want to support this channel you can consider becoming a Patreon member to make the request like this. Or you can support this channel on PayPal or Ko-fi link in the description. And if you want to buy Google Drive link which has more than 300 plus novel audiobook then you can visit my Ko-fi account. Where you will get Google Drive link in just $20 for lifetime. Also, if you want to read an advanced chapter or want to support the author of this novel then you can support the author. Link in description. One the most immersive VR. Ever since the first virtual reality games appeared on the gaming scene, the full dive virtual reality became technology's next target. And in 2020, it finally happened. Every gamer dreamed of this moment for a bloody long time. The FDVR gaming sets and software started flooding the market after a massive advertising campaign throughout the world. FDVR technology allows a person's consciousness to transfer into the game world. Millions of gaming fans, scratch that, millions of gaming fanatics, invaded the stores that sell the console of their dreams. I've seen people fighting each other over their turns in the lines. They mostly got carried away by the dream of gaming with such an advanced piece of tech. What a bother? As an old gamer who spent many years playing RPGs, I also decided that I need to take this to the extreme and awaken my old gaming ghost from his slumber. I'll play that game once again, the game that was released in my years of high school and stole most of my time and money The Elder Scrolls v. Skyrim. One may wonder, that's an offline single player game? Am I going all this way to this store and standing in this damnable heat under the burning summer sun of Egypt, just to buy a single FDVR headset for an offline single player game? Hell yes, I am. And before you start judging, I just want to say that I suck at MMOs. Seriously, too many idiots gathered in one place trying to do the same boring quests over and over again between PvE and PvP to all this madness. I just can't stand it. To me, they are not enjoyable at all, and most of them lack the good story that makes the player fall in love with the game and its lore, to research the realism and immersion, and to discuss the game world online and build theories about it. That's how I enjoy the game. And also as a personal reason when it comes to MMOs, I don't have any special skills or anything to stand out or make friends, I am your average gamer who plays just for fun. By the way, I am a lawyer, and I work my ass in a law firm that consumes me as a slave laborer. Sigh, go to law school, they said, be a public prosecutor and hoard money, they said. Damn it to hell. All I wanna do now is just to relax and play Skyrim. What a pain. Skyrim has been published for years and it seems that Bethesda, the game company, barely graced us with a teaser trailer for the sixth part of the franchise. A slash N, this was written in 2018, if by any chance Tuz, 6 was released before 2020 then it will get edited. Seriously now, Ubisoft, another company, is publishing an Assassin's Creed game every year, while Skyrim is surviving all this long because of its freedom and depth, but more importantly, it is thanks to the outstanding efforts that was put into the mods by the modders. As well as some official side projects like Skyrim, Special Edition and Skyrim, Virtual Reality. They also published Skyrim, Full Dive Virtual Reality. It's the reason why I am standing here after all. Speaking of the mods, the term stands for modifications, they are DLC-like content that overhauls the gameplay or expands the world. Modders usually upload their mods free or with a charge on the internet. Forget the game company's mods, they stink, and you have to pay for them, what kind of weird fetish is that? Basically, we Skyrim players download our mods mainly from Nexus Mods, where Skyrim has more than 57,000 mods last time I checked 2 years ago. And if that is not enough for you, then what else is? The mods are the pride and joy of us Skyrim players, they are basically about anything and everything, from weapons and magic mods to remodeling game mechanics mods, to graphics replacing mods, there are even adult content mods. Anyway, everyone and their mothers can find whatever mods they fancy. I am a graphics fanatic, so I go mostly with 200 plus mods in a gameplay that are mostly all about changing how the Skyrim world looks like. What a time to be alive. I can make good old Skyrim into some Korean MMO if I wanted to. But there is an unwritten rule when it comes to modding Skyrim, it is before looks, comes immersion. That is what our lord and savior the immersive lord MXR taught us. Enough about me remembering all that basic knowledge now. This damn line of people is barely advancing and my turn is coming nearer and nearer. Let's just stop raising flags for now. Also, when one should spray in this goddamn heat, it's suffocating. I think you should take a look at snovel.siomicron m. After a long struggle, and thank god that the shop has an air conditioner, I bought the gaming set of my dreams. I almost fainted from happiness but my financial status can't allow me to ruin this suit now. I know should have gone home and changed before I come here but the line was not that crowded yet so I took the chance. Now, I am ready to hit the road home. I also should stop thinking about playing so much. That can be considered raising a flag too. Zvul.siomicron m. While thinking about it, I was walking and about to cross the narrow street, that's when I heard a very unpleasant and uncalled for the sound of tires screeching against the road. My mind worked rapidly as I knew what is about to happen. The legendary truck con is trying to reap my soul. The sound of tires screeching drew nearer and nearer in a split of a second, and I was about to get pulverized when it reaches me. But at the very last moment, I put all of my strength in my legs and leap for it to the side of the road while not neglecting the duty of safekeeping the FDVR set I just bought. Thankfully, I managed to avoid the crisis by a hair's width. 
I also was keeping my guard up from any possible vase to crash into my head from the building next to me too. Phew, a trip to another world, perfectly avoided. I said while making a sigh of relief. No reincarnation for me today. I took a look at the source of the noise and to my disappointment, it was not anything scary. It was just a tuk-tuk. What is a tuk-tuk you ask? Well, it's what you call an auto rickshaw which is very popular in India. The tri-wheels motorbike that pulls a carriage. We have that in Egypt too. While I was looking with disappointment at the tuk-tuk, the driver hurriedly got out and apologized to me. The onlookers were giving him some cold gazes. This guy was rushing in a narrow street. After all, most tuk-tuk drivers are unlicensed and reckless anyway. Thinking about it, I came to the conclusion. The best way to avoid getting hit by a tuk-tuk is to be the tuk-tuk itself. I smiled at the driver and said it's alright with a friendly face. As long as he reflects on his actions, there was no need to scold him. Or maybe because I was in a hurry to play the game and didn't have time to argue about it. I asked him for a ride home just to get this problem over. Everything went smoothly after that as the tuk-tuk stopped under my apartment. I took out 10 Egyptian pound note but the driver strongly refused and asked me to consider the ride as an apology. Wow, what a nice guy. Seriously, you might not know this, but tuk-tuk drivers are mostly thugs around these parts. When the guy noticed my amazement, he puts on a smile and mentioned that he is a science school graduate, but just like most of his kind in this sorry excuse of a system, he couldn't find a job that suits his diploma, and due to his need of money he does some small jobs here and there. This is not something strange and I can relate to him, I am a law school graduate and not too much better than him. Lawyers' careers here have more downs than ups. Also, we are not sexually attractive so we don't live long anyway. The tuk-tuk driver and I got into a who is more unlucky competition and started to lament on the past. As people who shared some tragedies, we found each other's best friends before we even know it. After the short conversation, we exchanged phone numbers and said our farewells. Each on his way. I head to the pavement while saying salam, hey, to the butcher's son in their shop next to the building entrance. Proceeding through the entrance, I smelled the stink of a cat. It is probably the cat that always sneaks into the entrance and made it its lair. Well, whatever her highness wants. I am a cat person myself and it's not like the stink will kill me or anything. I mean, we have a butcher next door so the smell is already ruined. I tried to interact with the cat but I got splendidly ignored. The cat scratches her neck with her rear leg with flexibility and walks away. I normally get ignored if I don't give her something to eat. Sigh, this cat, what an adorable tsundera. Forget that now. To the elevator, or what I call the hell lift, as it resembles a narrow coffin with the length of a meter and the width of a half. I pressed the most unlucky number in the world 13. 2 Linka star 2. As I entered my apartment, I saw my roommates lazing around doing a zero nothing. Why am I not surprised? Other than the holy sanctum, my room, this apartment needs to be cleansed by the purifiers and flames. What a mess. Let's forget that for now because it is introduction time, ahem. From the room that has a balcony and yet no view to the sea, weighing over 120 kgs, he is an accountant in some big company's warehouse, I introduce to you, fatty, and on the opposite couch, sits the one who resides in the dark room next to the kitchen, weighing less than 80 kgs, he is a 6th year medical school student, I introduce to you, four eyes, those are my roomies and friends from ages, if one just can ignore the amount of laziness that can radiate just by their existing around, fatty is an accountant so he's not much better off than me, and four eyes is still a student. It meant that the three of us is in a critical financial state. Still, since we are all of the same age, we tend to be on friendly terms, unless when it comes to our anime's favorite genres. From what I know, they are greater perverts than I am. Fatty is a lilicon to the core, and shitty four eyes is even weirder. He sometimes brings bones back home saying he is going to study them. Study my ass? These are someone's bones you bastard? If I didn't know what necrophilia is, I would have thought he was attempting some sort of necromantic rituals. Although these guys have their flaws, they too have been through complications that lead them here. While saying what's up to the crew, they noticed the FDVR set in my hands and their eyes lit up. I told them beforehand that I was going to buy it but they thought that the sets will sell out before I even get to the store. Now that I have the device in my very hands, without any dignity or honor, they immediately offered their respect while cupping their hands as if we are in some Chinese novel and also decided to call me boss, all that if I agreed to grace them with trying out the FDVR set. The amount of shamelessness that dwells within them is quite admirable. Well, these guys are my friends, so I am not really against it. Anyway, there is something more important right now. Comrade Four Eyes, is it done? Yes, boss. Preparations are complete, we are ready for the launch. Good man? Comrade Fatty, I hope you don't fail me this time once again. Eh? Sorry, boss. So you did fail me. I will go right away, boss. He took his keys and ran to the door. Bring some coffee on the way back. Understood, boss. Sigh. And he goes to his task. Anyway, the complete preparations meant something very important so I headed to my PC and checked the download tasks. He he he. Here it is, Bethesda's newest release is 100% completely downloaded, Skyrim FDVR, hail boss, at ease comrade four eyes, we still have more work to do, rho alpha and d alpha sn omicron v epsilon l dot c omicron m, yes, the work is still far from over, why, one may wonder, pretty simple, I am not playing this game with no mods, 
My precious immensely immersive immersion mods. I can pretty much guess how the game will look like without them, and I don't want to see those scary original game meshes, faces, and textures in my FDVR experience. That is why I'll have to take care of that with lots and lots mods. My next task is simple. First, I'll visit the Nexus Mods website and download all the goodies that I don't have right now. I have pretty much all the essential and the famous mods, but since the FDVR technology has very high capabilities and uses the brain as the area of operation instead of the computer's CPU, I can operate more mods than usual without worrying about crashing the game. After all, the human brain has the capability and capacity to process the data subconsciously faster than any computer. The second task I have to do is to clean all the dirty plugins, install the animations, and sort the mods load order. This is a basic routine for Skyrim players, as we can't just leave anything to crash on our heads. In other words, it's going to get busy, so I guess I'll have to take my time. I can't really recall my entire mod list, but there are some particular ones that can't be easily missed. A mod like Skyrim HD is a must. Sky UI for modding the game menus and also a mod that one can't simply play the game without it. Immersive armors and immersive weapons for various weapons and armors. A body enhancer such as CBB or UNP. I think you should take a look at snovel.comicron M. Static meshes and improvements for making everything more detailed. Enhanced lighting and FX for interior lights and climates of Tamriel of exterior lights. Skyrim flora overhaul for the sake of natural beauty. And these are just some of the mods. There are around 500 mods in my arsenal by now, mostly for the sake of realism and immersion. Other than immersion, I also seek the gameplay mods. My gameplay mods are not that complicated because I am a classic player, so my gaming style is not about using all what the game has to offer. Rather I play as a certain class, even though I have the ability to play with every option there is. The major classes in Skyrim are the Warrior, the Mage, and the Thief. The skills in Skyrim are a total of 18 skills. Three classes and 18 skills may seem rather few for an RPG, but that isn't really the case here. The game offers a high amount of freedom in choosing whatever skill you want, so players can create their own classes. Simplicity itself? One can make a mix between these skills that can be called a build, such as the Spellblade which allows the player to use both magic and melee weapons. This, however, will force the player to give up the left hand for spell casting and devote the right hand to use a melee weapon. In other words, the player won't be able to use the blocking moves. This was just an example. Back to the skills, the skills are divided under their respective class. Warrior skills are, two-hand weapons, one-hand weapons, archery, blocking, heavy armor, and smithying. Mage skills are, alteration, conjuration, destruction, enchanting, illusion, and restoration. Thief skills are, alchemy, light armor, speech, sneak, pickpocket, and lockpicking. Each skill has its perk tree that offer perks, a passive skill that can be unlocked with perk points. One can gain a single perk point per level and the only way to level up is to use the skills. Once a skill rose to a certain point it will give the player a skill advancement and once the players have a certain amount of skill advancements they will level up. A skill has 100 levels cap which is rather inconvenient, so there comes a great mod called Skyrim Community Uncapper which removes this inconvenience. Back to the classes, mixing some skills can make what is called builds as mentioned before. Other great examples are paladins, assassins, warlocks, and more. Paladins use one-handed, heavy armor, and restoration to give players more of a holy type experience. Assassins use archery, sneak, and one-handed to kill their targets from a distance, or up close and personal. Warlocks use conjuration and illusion to command their armies and summon creatures to help them. Here comes another inconvenience. The necromancer's summoners are a bit weak due to the limit on summoning and raising the dead which is restricted to only one creature, and until the players reach the level 100 in conjuration, they can raise and summon two creatures. It's one of the game flaws, in my opinion, so using a mod like Multiple Summons by Kanguilla can easily fix that problem in a very immersive way that doesn't break the game, unlike the other multiple summoning mods. It increases the number of summons relying on the skill rank. The mage skills have 5 ranks, so its max number is 6 summons. Pure mages are the masters of destruction, so adding a mod like Apocalypse that adds 155 spells to the game that are totally balanced, lore-friendly and immersive. Balanced Magic is a mod that makes magic more powerful as the skills level goes up as well as some other features. Thieves can be assassins and hunters but some players add illusion magic to the mix and make some sort of Nightblade build. After recalling all that, I noticed something interesting on the Nexus homepage. A new mod that was released just yesterday, it's a quest mod called Origins of the Lost. And the description of the mod is very interesting. It adds a backstory to the character depending on its race, it has three backstories for the human, the elf, and the beast races. I just saw it on the front page in Nexus and really got amazed by it. There are mods that tried to do something like that in the past but this mod has quests and voice acting so it will be a top quest mod for sure, I definitely have to add it and try it out. All in all, that's what Skyrim is all about. Mixing mods, perks, and skills made this game is so much fun and never gets old. I mean look at it, it's 2020 already and the game is officially 10 years old, still, it's as lively and popular as ever. 
Away from the Nexus there are some mods that come from Lover's Lab. These are the plus 18 mods that everyone know and love, Amorous Adventures, and SOS, SCHGS of Skyrim, as well as OSA and OSX, one can guess pretty much what are these mods about, I don't have weird fetishes so no more than that. A slash N, there will be some naughty content in the future so buckle up. E slash N, yikes. While looking at my mod list, or what I would rather call mod arsenal, with satisfaction, the loading was pretty much at its end. All what is left is using the tools to install the animation, sort the load order and clean the dirty plugins. Looking at the window, I found that it was already sunset. I went up to answer the call of nature. Looking at the time, it's around 6pm and Fatty hasn't returned yet, his task was to buy us some fancy dinner. Today we are celebrating of course, so some pizza or kushari won't do our financial situation any harm. While thinking about that, I went the balcony to watch the setting sun and the pink to orange horizon, smelling the sea breeze from the 13th floor is a blessing no matter how you say about the neighborhood. Alexandria is always this nice in summer and the scenery of Castle Cape Bay with the sea is charming as ever. Now now, it's not the time to get sentimental. Looking back at the screen, everything is already done. Yep, let's connect the VR device. I read the instruction from the manual, and it was surprisingly easy, there is a device that connects the headset to the PC and it has a few buttons and lights. Following the guide, I went through all the steps without any issues. Ready for it. Linkustarto. Chapter has been edited by Josue561. 3. The Infinite Loading Screen. I sat on the in front of my PC and relaxed my body, then tilted the chair backward. Now that I look at it, the FDVR headset looks like the nerve gear from a certain anime. I felt the smoothness of its design and the softness of the padding inside. It's really a masterpiece, even though this is a commercial grade product. Whoever produced this piece of tech has my utmost respect. I put the FDVR headset on and looked at it through my phone's front camera. Handsome as always me, I thought to myself as I took a selfie. I put the phone away, and closed my eyes, then shouted Linkustar 2, in excitement. As expected, nothing happened? Well, the only thing that happened was Four Eyes who retorted at me with the word idiot, from outside. So you have shown your true color comrade Four Eyes? Also, I am not an idiot? You are the idiot. Your whole family are idiots? Seven generations of your ancestors are idiots? Humph. How about that you necrophiliac bastard? To tell the truth, I just couldn't hold back myself as my soul is that of a true fanboy. That is to say, I don't think I am the only one that has done that though. Plenty of other idiots roam the under the same heaven too. Back to the FDVR headset, there are a few precautions one must take note of mentioned in the manual. Things like, maintaining a safe body posture while being in the game, not forcefully plug off the headset from someone's head even though the device is safe and there is no harm, it might have some hangover effects. It is also noted to not use the device for more than 6 hours a day, and any more than that will cause the FDVR headset to forcefully log you out. How very thoughtful? This device is amazing no matter how you think about it. After following the instructions, checking, and double-checking everything, I readied myself and took a deep breath then lay down on the bed next to my desktop, stretched my legs in a comfortable way, turned my head in a steady position, and looked at the ceiling. Couldn't help but grin while pressing the button on the headset. I closed my eyes and the metallic voice of a countdown started. As the countdown reached zero, my mind sank into the darkness. What I saw in front of my eyes was a wondrous space all in black, looking around didn't really tell me where is left or where is right. Out of nowhere, a thick white text popped into my face. Bethesda Studios. This was scary, next time, I'll add that mod that removes that scarecrow that the company planted here. After that, some white smoke came from surroundings drawing near and nearer blending in the space. Strangely, I am breathing, but no type of scent comes to my nose. I became aware of how does it feel when someone loses their sense of smell, I thought I would smell the smoke but I smelled nothing at all. It's a very weird and uncomfortable sensation, having to breathe like you are not breathing, it proved many things about the real world smell to me. What an eye opener? Also, I noticed that the rest of the senses are pretty much weaker than usual too. That was expected. Actually, I heard on the TV that it's natural, due to the difference between the amounts of information between the digital realm and the real realm. But still, having to experience this myself is quite the feat. Zvul.c Omicron M. I checked my surroundings once again and I saw a very familiar scenery of a dragon emblem made of metal that has few cracks. The dragon is the imperial dragon, the symbol of the empire from the game. Beneath the dragon on right was a smaller symbol of the game company and on the right of the dragon appeared to be a few words materializing midair. They are as followed. New. Load. Credit. Quit. Everything seems to be in place. I tried to select the new select option, only to notice that I have no hand. The hell? So it was like this? If I remember correctly, I have to use my mentality to move the marker between choices. So let's give it a try now. Actually, it's a piece of cake. Me moving around the dark space a while ago was done using my mentality too. So that's how things work. Switching between the options for practice, I choose new and confirm for the confirmation message. From this point, things should go smoothly, but a message box appeared. Looking at the box I realized it was not something from the game. Then it got to be a mod. Thanks for choosing our mod Origins of the Lost. This mod will take your primary character information before you start. You can choose appearance later in the gameplay. Continue dash. Oh, it was that mod. 
I forgot to read how it works and immersed myself in the overall details, silly me, still, for it to work like that? Impressive. There is only one choice anyway so let's be done with it. First, it asked about the race. Races in Skyrim are categorized into 10 different races but they are basically humans, elves, and beasts. The humans are Nords, Imperials, Regiards, and Bretons. Nords are Skyrim natives, strong, proud and beautiful people. They mostly reassemble the Vikings. Imperials come from the Cyrodiilic Empire, they are good in both magic and combat. They reassemble the Roman. Regiards are the natives of Hammerfell, who are natural warriors and they resemble both Arabs and Africans. Bretons are the natives of High Rock, who has elven ancestry and like elves strong in magic. They are a bit shorter than most humans but they are the closest race to Europeans. Elves are High Elves, Dark Elves, Wood Elves, and Orcs. High Elves are from Somerset Isle, and they are naturally gifted in the arcane arts. Tall, long-living, and arrogant folk with a bit of golden skin and pointy ears. I think you should take a look at Snovel.Siomicron M. Wood Elves are from Valen Wood, they're known for their excellent talent in marksmanship and taming animals. They are the closest to your typical elves from the movies and they are much better in manners. Dark Elves are from Morrowind East to Skyrim, they are strong battle mages. They are not as haughty as the High Elves but their nobels are a true pain in the ass. Orcs, who are counted as elves, are a cursed race of elves, they are gifted in battle and smithying, they have the same looks as Warcraft orcs, but in a human size and a bit darker skin. Argonians and Kajiat are categorized under beast. Argonians are the lizardmen with human figures. Kajiat are people with heads and fur of cats. Both races are good at stealth. With that knowledge in mind, I choose the human section and then Nord. They might not seem attractive to a first-time player, but Nords are all good. They have 50% frost resistance and combat talent bonus. Also, they are good-looking, tall, and fair-haired folk. More than that, they are the natives of Skyrim. I would normally not worry about racial buffs or abilities because with a high level in chanting and gear, all of that is meaningless. After selecting the race, another box popped up asking for the gender and the name. I normally play as a male, but I had no name in mind. Maybe the name John would do for now. I use it a lot since I started watching Game of Thrones anyway. I used my mind to enter the name and it was magically, or mentally, formed. A piece of cake. After finishing all that and choosing confirm, the screen changed and all items on it disappeared then another scene from the game came up. This was the typical first time Skyrim loading screen. It was a black dragon with fiendish appearance, it has a spiky black scales, two rear legs, and two spread out wings. It also posed into a roaring position and looked scary ferocious. The dragon was standing on a half circular word wall and that wall was full of runes of the dragon language from the inside. The dragon itself looked scary and sinister, this is one of the loading screens that shows up every time the players start their gameplay. There was also some game facts and hints on the bottom right side of the dragon. It's usually some lore and gameplay related stuff. First fact or tip was, and the scrolls have foretold, of black wings in the cold, that when brothers wage war come unfurled, Alduin, bane of kings, ancient shadow unbound, with a hunger to swallow the world, song of the dragonborn. Then, when a dragon uses a breath attack like fire or frost, it is speaking in an ancient and powerful language. A battle between two dragons is actually a deadly verbal debate. Yayaan. Tiber Septim brought peace to Tamriel in 2 times 10 to the power of 896, by conquering all of the known world. Thus began the Third Era. Yes, thank you. Nord Belief holds that the honored dead live forever in Savangard. It's taking a bit too long. Tip after tip, fact after fact, it took longer than expected. Is it Skyrim's most infamous infinite loading screen? Come on. Something is not right. It's almost an hour and the loading is not done yet. Didn't they say the headset will make the performance much better? The hell is going on? Okay, this is serious? I can't do anything in the loading screen, and there are little to no methods to sort this kind of situation. Emergency logout. Nothing. Force quit. Also nothing. Task manager. Restart program. I suddenly realized that I am not aware of the track of time anymore. This has taken too long. I am feeling some pain in my head. What the fuck is going on? Seriously, what the hell is this all about? Did I perhaps put my head in an uncomfortable position? I can't even seem to force myself out. I don't want to spend 6 hours like this. Is it because of the number of mods I added? I do admit that 500 mods are quite the amount but I thought it was fine. After a long while, the loading screen blacked and nothing appeared on it anymore. Even its music has faded away. All that is left was blackness. Just blackness? It has been loading for an hour. I am starting to feel sick of seeing the color black. I feel dizzy. I feel like a stone in water. I feel tired and sleepy too. This is bad. Why do I feel sleepy while actually sleeping in a FDVR set? This doesn't make any sense. I can't hold on much longer. I hope the headset forcefully pull me back out. Please. Chapter has been edited by Josue 561. For a warrior, a knight, and a thief. The sound of galloping drifted between the trees, breaking the silence of night. Two moons lit the sky as the howls of wolves echoed. Normally, no one would ride in such a way, yet the riders seemed to be left with little choice. They seemed to be in a hurry, but all of a sudden, they came to a halt. One of the riders, clad in armor and was armed with an unusual blade. He jumped from his horse, and began his search for something. 
Finally, he fixed his gaze on some stone formation that were put together in an unusual shape, it's clearly someone's doing. He moved the rubble to find a stone with some carving on its base. Lady Hilda, we found a mark, just a little bit to the east the man shares his discovery to the other rider, a woman with a large hood. She moves her gaze to the man and nodded. Then let's hurry, brother fool dame. We don't have much time before sunrise she spoke with a voice which is young, yet dignified, and noble. The man called fool dame nodded his head and jumped back on his horse, he wore a grim expression, yet he never showed it to the lady. After a little while, they arrived to a big lake. Searching the area, they found another stone formation. Fool them rode to it, then turned towards Lady Hilda. He nodded to her to confirm that this is the place they were after. Hilda rode nearer to the stone formation, and took out something from her saddle's bag, it was a money purse made of a golden fabric, then she threw it in the middle of the stone formation. Just before it hits the ground, something happened, and it started to float in midair, then it disappeared. Fool them, who was already in high alert, griped the hilt of his sword in preparation. Suddenly, a hoarse voice came from behind, and Fooldame turned hurriedly and unsheathed his sword. But then Hilda rose her hand to signal Fooldame to stop, barley moving her blue eyes. She had anticipated this meeting, thus she was not in full alert. Who calls for the guild, a man in a black leather outfit and a hood comes from the shadow holding no weapon. His presence however, is that of a shadow, mysterious but yet capable of anything. Hilda took off her hood revealing her appearance. Under the light of the moons, her beauty had capitated the atmosphere, her crimson hair fluttered with the wind, her eyes were deep and blue as the ocean, and the freckles dotted across her face. Her height was quite admirable, giving off the feeling of nobility and honor. It has been a while, Delvin her voice had a Nordic accent. The man in shadow, now revealed as Delvin, widened his eyes in amazement at her refined beauty. He sighed, then he looks to the stone formation. Tanilia, go back first. Delvin issued his command to his subordinate, a few moments later, steps can be heard heading away. Fool them immediately turned towards Hilda in a questioning gaze, not understanding why would they converse with the scum from Thieves' Guild in the first place. Thieves? Lady Hilda, what is going on? Hilda ignored Fool them's question and looked at Delvin. Delvin stared back, looking into the depths of her eyes, if he had to describe them, he would say that it is impossible to not drown yourself in them. And thus, he was the first to avert eye contact. After a deep sigh, he looked at her again. I heard the news that Hammerfell is signing a treaty with the Aldmiri Dominion a year ago, I thought you would come right away. Delvin questioned with a sad expression. I was delayed, and it was better to take a detour through the empire. Hilda replied with a soft voice. I thought you couldn't make it. Anyways, back to the usual. How can I serve Lady Firemane? Although Delvin showed his concern, he knew that Hilda did not come to converse, but to talk business. Thus his attitude had switched back to fit the business persona. We need a passage into Riften her request was clear and precise, but yet Delvin turned his head side to side. You can't, it's crawling with Thalmer agents. But the Jarl. No matter how sympathetic the Jarl is towards Ulfric, with a large sum of gold, she can be bought. In Dagon's name, even her steward is a high elf. Can't we go through the fishery? Or there any other secret way to the ratway? Answers no. Only the guild members have an understanding with the guards. I'll pay way tef. Listen, whatever you offer, the Thalmer offered twice the bribes. Usually, I would help you guys out, but the guild has been through some bad luck recently. We have been at setbacks many times. I can't afford any to damage the guild, it's bad for business, and bad overall. I'm sorry, truly. After Delvin gave his explanation, Hilda nodded in understanding. Still, the uneasiness in her heart made her face crumble. You can still smuggle back something small, right? She asked. The look in her eyes, the tone of her voice, the seriousness of her expressions made the cold weather of Skyrim even colder. Yeah, Delvin replied. Hilda's expression eased down when Delvin agreed to her request. She moved her arms, pushing the black heavy cloak covering her body. When she revealed the infant in her hands, Delvin gasped in surprise and gave a wry smile that I think you should take a look at snovel.comicron m. So that's why you were delayed. Rho Alpha and D Alpha S Nu Omicron V Epsilon L Omicron M. Hilda got down from her horse slowly and approached Delvin. Fool them, who had his right hand away from his blade a while ago, jumped from his horse and followed after Hilda. Seeing her approach Delvin, he unconsciously held the scabbard with his left hand and narrowing his eyes, glaring daggers at Delvin. This is my son, John Hild. Hilda spoke with resolute, nobody noticed her throat getting a bit shrugged take him with you, please. W what? Delvin and Fool them cried in unison, as Delvin's shock betrayed his expression and became clear on his face. Fool them, on the other hand, as he was walking to Hilda's side, misstepped and was about fall. What are you saying, Lady Hilda? That's unthinkable? That's the commander's and your son, and you entrust him to a thief. Fool them was at his wit's end, as he couldn't keep up anymore. Hilda on the other hand, had a stiff look on her face. Why? Delvin was bewildered. Why would this woman ask him such a thing? He's a thief, a criminal, part of the ratway's scum. Yet, he was being entrusted with what most people would protect the most. I don't have enough supplies to feed him anymore. I can't go into Riften, but you can. Riften has an orphanage, make sure he is taken care of, keep an eye on him, until I come back for him. Hilda words were heavy on her heart, yet she found the courage to say them. Delvin was silent, as a professional thief, he had to make rapid decisions in situations like this one. 
Fulding was grumbling in a heavy mood while looking down. His commander's wife was handing over her son to a thief, but yet he couldn't say a word. Why? Because the moment Hilda said that she could not provide the infant anymore, he understood that it was for the best that the infant must be given to someone as capable, although he is a thief, to ensure the baby's survival. Fuldame could not protect the child, he was unable to. If they go with the child, his fate is either death from hunger or death under a Thalmer blade. It was just too bitter. Fuldame hated the Great War, he hated the Thalmer, he hated the Empire that betrayed them. His hatred was to the point of murder, he just wanted to kill them like he did six years ago in the Battle of Red Ring, where he killed a 100 elves in a single raid. While Fulding was in his dire state of mind, Delvin's voice sounded as firm as Hilda's. If it's for the sake of Lord Jonrad's son, then it's finally my time to pay the old debt. I'll never fail, even if it costs me my hide. He took the child from the lady, and looked at the boy. He was a bit similar to his mother, same eye color but his hair was auburn, darker than hers. His pale skin was a Nord feature, and even in this cold, the boy was sleeping peacefully. Delvin, who was a Breton, was shivering while this child was taking it easy. Nords. He sighed in his mind while looking back to Hilda, whose emotions betrayed her and looked at her son with sad expressions. She turned her back suddenly, startling Delvin. When she gets to her horse, she took a huge battle axe and a fur knapsack, then she took out a journal and handed it to Delvin. This is my note, give it to him when he is strong enough. I want him to be strong for the fight ahead, never teach him of his ancestry or the name Firemane, his name will be only John and make up a solid story, you understand? Yes. Delvin nodded. Hilda turned but then she turned her head saying, and you know the price of failing me. Delvin gulped his saliva before nodding with a meek expression. Let's go brother Fuldame. Hilda jumped nimbly on her horse. Following her, Fuldame rode his horse and galloped behind her. Leaving Delvin alone with a child in his arms he was so bewildered at how this meeting ended. Stay safe my lady, he whispered and went back into darkness. Riding on the traveler's road Hilda and Fuldame were slowing down their horses. So, they finally caught us. Hilda shows a wild grin that of a beast, let's see how much will you bring down this time old man. She said as she waved her battle axe. Let's not. Fuldim said, he took her horse's reins and looked at her, don't die today, Lady Hilda. I'll take the horses and ride opposite to Riften, you run south then few days later head north to Windhelm. What are you saying Hilda wanted to refute but she was interrupted. Let's meet at Windhelm. Fuldim has already made his mind. Hilda expressions changed to that of a sad look, then she smiled and nodded to the man. Like the wind, she took her battle axe and knapsack disappearing south into the forest. Fuldim smiled, turned the horses and his killing intent felled the air, now it's you and me you filthy elves. Chapter has been edited by Josue 561. 5 Why is it leaking? The night in Riften carries many dangers, as ruffians and degenerates roam the alleys. On the surface, it was a quiet and calm city, but thieves lurked in the darkness, meanwhile the guards snooze in their posts. Near to Mistvale Keep, the castle where the Jarl lives, there was a two-story wooden building, commonly known as Honor Hall Orphanage. A figure emerged out of the darkness, barely seen due to the lantern on the front door. Delvin was about to knock on the door, but then he stopped, hesitating for a second. This was an orphanage after all, so it was not that common for him to come near this place. And also there is another problem. To register a child in the orphanage, one needs to meet with the headmistress. The headmistress was someone very familiar with Delvin, and she also was a Dunmer, dark elf, called Nirina. Nirina was a very beautiful woman with grey skin and crimson eyes. Dunmers are not a strange sight to see in Riften, after all, their home Moro wind was on the eastern borders of Riften. The Red Mountain erupted in the fifth year of the fourth era, four times ten to the power of negative fifth, leaving many Dunmers with little choice but to find refuge in Skyrim, or other parts of Tamriel. A slash n, 4 e stands for fourth era, 5 is year 5. Delvin knocked on the door, expecting to see the beautiful dark elf greeting him. Footsteps could be heard from the other side and the wooden door opened slowly. Delvin, who gave his back to the door turned around with a friendly face, only to have his expressions turn sour. Right, I forgot about this old hag. The one who opened the door was Nirina's assistant, Grelid, an unfriendly woman who glares at everything and everyone, even the stones on the roadside has their share of her glares. Her nickname, Grelid the Kind, is quite ironic, since she treats the children with severe discipline, and punishments if they disobey her orders. Who in oblivion is dropping off another brat at this hour? I am Mallory, although surprised by the unusual visit, Grelid was looking at the figure in front of her with scorn and more hostility than her usual glares. Where is the headmistress? Delvin asked with discomfort. He rather not let her lay a finger on the infant he was carrying. What is your business with the headmistress? Grelid insisted to ask. It was a surprise that Grelid had not attempted to call the guards, unlike any other sane person would do if they encountered a professional thief. Perhaps, she thought her nasty attitude and that glare of hers would suffice in dealing with thugs like Delvin. Unfortunately for her, Delvin is one of the guild masters for a reason. Even though he is a thief, he had the aura of a killer. His eyes turned cold, and he moved his left hand to his back. A second later Grelid could hear a dagger being unsheathed. I don't have time to deal with a Hagraven right now, stand aside, and let me speak with the headmistress. Or else, I might have to start an extermination intimidation is one of the most powerful instruments that thief can have on his or her arsenal. 
With a rough, fearless tone and enough willpower, even merchants would yield to it. She hurriedly took a step back, sucking her teeth in utter defeat. Of course, she could have called the guards, and then Delvin had to make a run for it, but it would ruin her reputation. Although his intimidation wasn't completely effective, it had done its job. She would rather let him do whatever he pleased, as long it doesn't affect her or the children, strangely enough, than to be a laughing stock for the rest of her days. She nodded, and closed the door. A minute later the door was opened again, this time, another woman appeared. She was so beautiful that she could steal the moonlight with her radiance. She had pointy long ears and dark violet lips. Her nose was thin and very fitting for her face. Her body was slim, and the size of her breasts and the curves of her waist were impressive. What stood out the most, however, was her crimson beautiful eyes and her arched brows. Delvin barely held himself from changing his expressions, she was a woman that could ruin a nation. No wonder Grelid is a feisty old bitch. Many children would rather have this fine beauty take care of them, rather than a hag he mentally noted. The woman looked at Delvin with a friendly smile. What brings you in this hour, Mr. Mallory? A favor. I came for a favor. Not for the guild, but for me. Fufu, I knew you would come to ask for another favor one day, Delvin her prowess, her fine beauty, and her gentle confidence were indeed dangerous. Although she was just teasing, her seduction can even make a guild master sweat. The woman stepped outside the entrance and closed the door behind her. What is it? She asked. Delvin looked to space beside the orphanage and nodded, a second later a girl walked out, and she was carrying a baby that was sleeping peacefully. Due to the thieves' nature of sneaking and walking in the shadow, the kid was never awoken. As the girl was walking nearer and nearer towards Delvin and Nurana, she stopped and removed her hood with her left hand, while keeping the boy with her right. Headmistress she greeted. So it was you, Tanilia. The girl had brown skin and black hair with gray eyes, these were some features that pointed to Reguards, natives of Hammerfell. From the atmosphere between the Dunmer and the Reguard females, it seemed that there was a history between them. Tanilia stepped forward and handed the baby in her arms to Delvin, and from him, he offered the child to Nurana. She looked between the kid and Delvin, then she takes the kid in her arms. Too beautiful to be yours. These were the first words to come out of her mouth, and Delvin's face immediately stiffed. Tanilia was barely holding her laughter, resulting in a pfft sound. Rho Alpha and D Alpha S N Omicron V Epsilon L dot C Omicron M. He is the child of someone I owe my life to, and I can't entrust him to just anyone. Delvin says in firmness. So he is not just another child you will charm with words of wisdom and drag him to the ratway to be your lackey. Nurana's words seem to have hit the nail on its head. Delvin quieted down and was having conflicted feelings about how to reply to such accurate words. He decided to only shake his head denying her accusation. His mother is someone that resembles you so much, she was alive the last time I saw her, but she was being chased. Nurana looked to the child and her face turned serious. In what way does she resemble me? I cannot share much detail on that, but both you are monsters, I'm sure you'd get along quite nicely. Then, this little one have to grow healthy, and be a strong man. Nurana raised her brows and looked at the child and with a smile. The child with red hair reacted by yawning in his sleep and leaning his head on her bosom. She couldn't help but smile vividly. What is the boy's name and does he have any belongings? I would appreciate it if you register him in an earlier date than today, Delvin recommended. Why? Nurana tilted her head, not understanding why would Delvin request that. We don't want any unwanted attention around him, especially from the city's latest visitors. Delvin explained. Thalmer. Nurana opened her eyes wide in a shock, she unconsciously hugged the child tightly. H he's less than a year old? They wouldn't inflict harm towards an innocent child, would they? These bastards don't care for such things. If they ever find out his heritage, they will most likely put his soul on a black soul gem, just for sport. Delvin spoke with hatred. Then he continued I'll keep my eye on the kid from the shadows, his only belonging is a journal left by his mother. I will be safe keeping it until he is old enough. Nurana nodded silently. And watch out for him from that Hagrave and Grelid. Delvin warned her. The last thing he'll ever want for the boy is to have a miserable childhood. A slash N. Hagravens are a horrific cross between an old crone and a bird. They fire AoE magic and can be found in the reach west of Skyrim. Go away already, before any guards come by and get suspicious. I know what to do. Nurana began to be cautious, and shoo away Delvin from the orphanage. Delvin gave a wry smile before heading into the darkness. I think you should take a look at Snovel.C Omicron M. Kid's name is John. He whispered, then disappeared into the night. Nurana turned around and closed the orphanage's door with the child. A slash N, first person POV once again, MC is back. Was that light just now? I am out of the damn headset. Finally, phew, I already have VR phobia, I really thought I will never make it. Damn, the light is too bright. Did Fatty and Four Eyes drag me out of my bed? Don't tell me I will wake up in a hospital after two years of blank memories? No, no, definitely not. Calm down me, yes keep calm. Now let's see where this light is coming from. Oh, what is that? This hospital has a weird taste of decoration? I mean, a wooden ceiling is too weird in this part of the world, right? Maybe it's some weird place where they treat people for less money. I knew it. These guys really did it this time? Man, wait until I, your daddy, comes home and teach you a lesson? Now, to the matter at hand, where is this annoying light coming from? I look around to my left and open my eyes widely, is that? A fireplace? 
In Egypt, these things don't even exist. Wah, wah, wait, what the hell? I am pretty sure I was saying is anyone here? Wait a second, this furniture looks so damn familiar. I I can't believe it. I'm in game? Didn't I get out? But look at the place, I downloaded too many realism and immersion mods till I mistook it with reality? Unf can believable? This is the best thing I've ever seen, wowzers. Can I take a screenshot? Doesn't seem I can. Not important? Anyway, why am I not moving? As I am trying to get up, I discover something strange. Oh, so that's how it is. I am a baby. A baby? Babies? In Skyrim? This origin of the something mod is getting better and better. Skyrim modding at its best ladies and gentlemen. So, I guess I am a lost child and I grow up in some place. Then the main story starts when I get older. Perfect? This is exactly how I imagined it to be. Anyway will I wait for anyone now or should I save the game? Let's just. Oh my god. A giant? Wah? Why a ah? Nope, that's not what I wanted to say. I only said omg. A giant. Stop embarrassing me. So you finally woke up. A womanly voice sounded from that giant. Oi, why do I feel so uncomfortable? Am I being carried up? Wait, this is no giant. If it was a giant, then it wouldn't be this attractive. By the gods, it's a beaut beaut a beautiful Dunmer. Day I I I am. Wa I wa. E slash N, it was confusing to have them side by side. Stop it. Seriously? Why am I making these damn noises? Eh he you look so lively. The Dunmer's voice acting is so top notch, who did such a fine job. And who could make such a fine looking NPC? Not even ethereal elven mod can make the elves that good? Was it Ilyanora's doing? Gotta be hers. Have to take a screenshot damn it. Wa wa ah. Let's ignore that voice. I can't find a way to screenshot at all, not even the mental control can do it. Then let's save the game, by the way, where is the HUD? Escape, not working, save, not that either. Okay, let's. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is that feeling? Ah crap, I need to go to the bathroom. But why is it that I'm about to cry? Ahem, is there a toilet around here? Wah wah ah wah. Not good, it's leaking, why is it leaking? This is Skyrim, right? There are no toilets in this game, right? There are no babies in this game, right? This is not reality, right? Right? No, don't take my clothes off. Please? Didanti look at it. If you do, it will destroy my dignity. No. Why a a a a Chapter has been edited by Josue 561. 6 The reason? I really waited for 6 hours to pass so the headset would force me out, but it wasn't just 6 hours. It was 6 years. 6 years after arriving in this world, many things are different from the game I used to know. More people, more space. The world is bigger, much much bigger than what it was in the game. I am to the tip of my nose in foreign waters. I may know some locations in Skyrim, some events that will happen in the future, I know many secrets and treasures whereabouts. But the people around me are not some NPCs, they are real people. Humans, elves, and beast folk really coexist in this world. I questioned the reality of this world so many times but I can't seem to be in a dream or hallucination, it led me to even question the world I was in before but that won't make anything understandable too. This world is not some fabrication or a dream. What kind of a dream can be so vivid and warm? What kind of world can give this amount of data unless it is a real world? I see it everywhere, in people as they are not fixed to certain moves and routine like it is in the game. I see it in nature as there are so many things I haven't seen in the game. I see it anywhere and everywhere, many people thought of me as a troubled or dark child because of my out of age behavior, so I started to get along with the other kids in the orphanage. Honor Hall Orphanage known nationwide in Skyrim as the largest orphanage, it was considered the only orphanage in the game but there seems to be one in the city of Markarth and another in the capital, Solitude. I am glad I was in Riften though, I got to meet with Nurina. Even though I miss my family in my past life I feel that Nurina is a family to me. She clearly favors me over the other kids, I know that, they know that but she always says that she raised me since I was less than a year old so she treats me as a relative, I owe her more than what I can possibly pay back in a lifetime. She was one of the people that never appeared in the game, I am not sure if mods are taking effect in this world or not, but me being here was due to the mod called Origins of the Lost. I requested to learn how to read and write from her at the age of 4, she never would have thought I already know how to do though. Actually this is just English so I am not in strange waters, even though it's not my first language. About my first language, I kept writing notes with it and mummer it to myself, just to not forget who I am or what I once was, I wrote these notes in secret and they were about all what I could remember about the mods, lore, secrets, and events that will happen in the future, I had to keep the knowledge that I am sure it will be of good use in the future. Grelid once found some of my notes in my native language and accused me of doing Didric rituals. A slash N, Didric refers to Didra which are a group of gods that are evil and do mess with the world with more freedom than actual gods. This f asterisking old crone doesn't leave me at peace. She hates Nurina and me, and also considers both of us her archenemies. Of course she does and why not? The only one who can stop her from beating the kids is Nurina and I always lash out at her. Nurina always tells me to respect thy elders but I am sure she excluded Grelid from the start. In the game Grelid always mistreats the children and abuses them, in that game Nurina doesn't exist, I don't want to believe anything bad will happen, but I won't let anything happen to Nurina even if it costs me my life, I swear on it. 
Aside from Nirana and my gang, there another person who visits me from time to time. He is Delvin, and not just any Delvin, it is Delvin Mallory. The Delvin Mallory from the Thieves Guild, this man is a master at the sneaking skill, just what is his relationship with me? He's a Breton so he can't be my relative thank God, I love to be a Nord in this country of Nords, because of a very disturbing reason. Nords are racist and there are only two racist races in this world that I know of and they are Nords and Altmer, the High Elves, which means no more bullying. Now introducing my gang, they are Usolda, Svidi and Wolfer. Usolda as everyone who played the game knows, is the chick that roams the market in the city of Wideron. She lost her parents and came to Riften and she has a strong desire for making money and being a merchant, Svidi and Wolfer were a sister and brother. Svidi is a quiet girl but was good singer, and Wolfer is an honest and kind guy. We usually play whenever it's possible and they treat me good so we are on good terms. Spending the days in this peaceful manner is not good for me. Usolda is already learning how to count money and how to speak to people. Svidi practice most of the time to become a bard and go to the bard's college while Wolfer accompanies me to read and learn from Nirana. He also helps Usolda in her weird ideas of buying and selling worthless stuff. These guys are already six years old and they are so dependable and hard workers. If I was like that in my past life then I would have become something much more than just a lawyer. It's decided, then I will do not just my best but my bestest, this world can kill anyone easily so best is to prepare and meet the world ready go. My first choice in a fantasy world with sword and magic is to learn the damn magic and the skills of the game, but there is a big problem I faced long ago. I can't access the skill menu or the magic menu. Of course this is reality there is no such thing as system or a handout but I never asked, right, I think you should take a look at snovel.siomicron m. I go to Nurana's room and knock on her door, she answers and says come in. I go inside right away. One of Nurana's habits is that when she sees me she always smiles, she heals everything with that smile, even though her smile would give me a trauma when I first came to this world but let's forget about that. Zvul.siomicron m. I sit on a wooden chair opposite to her, she puts away a book she was reading and looks at me silently. Nurana, I want to learn magic. I just got right into business, Nurana's brows rose up, then she closed her eyes and smiled, finally she said while widening her smile, and then she opened her eyes and leaned her body on her arms while resting her forearms on her knees like some sort of gangster. Brat, you always read about magic but you never asked about spell tomes, what took you so long, she said while being amused with the situation, so she was waiting for it huh? My friends are working hard for what they want to achieve, I don't want to lag behind. I replied nonchalantly. You don't have any dreams or goals. Nurana asked again. Damn it it's that question, the same one I failed to answer in my past life so many times. I have to answer carefully this time, I don't want to be a bard or merchant, I wanted to be an alchemist but you said materials need a lot of money, I wanted to be a smith but I feel learning magic now is more important than anything else. I gave my best answer. Nirana nodded while raising her brows again, anything else, she asks. Damn, I put all the good answers in one go, let's play a six year old for now, I, I also want to protect Nirana, not a bad answer even if I say so myself. Cut the crap. Nurana answer was as accurate as ever, I feel so sad for myself, why can't my innocent child act work on her? Fine, I will teach you magic, but only restoration magic. Nurana declares as she takes out two yellow books with a drawing of a light spirit on top of it. These are healing a self-healing magic and healing hands a magic that heals other people. I receive the books with high spirits. Can't I learn some alteration magic? I asked with a poker face. And what do you want it for? Nurana asked with puzzlement. To mess with Grelid of course. I answered with a sly smile. Nurana smiled back slyly too, mainly she was the one who I learned fox mode from so we always had this kind of conversations. She went back to her desk and took out two brown colored books with a tree drawn on them. I could read alarm and stone skin on them. Wait a second here. These are mod spells. The two of them are from mods, alarm is from apocalypse mod, it is a magic that alerts you when an enemy crosses the a certain perimeter, and stone skin is a magic that adds a layer of protection for a certain time but it's altered by a mod called balanced magic from its vanilla version which is called stone flesh that changes the character appearance in that of a stoneman, stone skin only adds a transparent layer of protection. This is serious? This means mods most certainly are affecting this world, this may be not bad, but that is strange. Thinking about it there are only four conclusions I came up with. The first is this world already existed but when I came to this world mods made changes. The second is the world was formed after my death in the VR headset. The third is that this world is an illusion. The fourth is this world already existed but some conditions were met with my mod list that made my reincarnation in this world possible. The first is scary, the second is absurd, the third is not good at all, but the fourth is the most possible conclusion I can come up with. So to summarize what happened to me, it is that I overloaded my mod list with realism mods that was not over the quota of the mod amount, but the amount of information itself had caused my brain to get overloaded and fall apart which resulted to my death, this information possibly made some kind of effect on me, or rather on something not visible like my essence, due to that effect some conditions must have been met like for example, the data in the game matched the information in the world and something like my soul took over or replaced John's soul like when you move a file in a folder and the folder has a file with the same name already there, so the new file has to replace the existing file. This is too absurd, this can't be real. 
I am saying that the indecent in the VR headset had changed the information of me renaming me to John and for some reason the information vessel, let's call it soul, moved from earth to Nirn and replaced the person that I have matching information with, what explains that even more is that John was already born but I don't have any memories of that time he lived in this body, incredible, only one mystery remains, what is the reason that led my soul from earth to Nirn, 7 learning magic, that was too much for my brain to process. Even Nirina and my friends saw my expressions changing between questioning to frowning to amazement all day and they gave me space. This is was really an incredible theory if it was right. Fear took me for a moment but what would I do with fear? I need strength to overcome the hurdles, gain more information and make a stable foothold in this world. I go back to my bed and open my chest where the books, tomes, and notes of mine are organized. I took my quill and inkwell as well as a red journal. This journal contains secrets that can make the Empire, Skyrim, and the Thalmer turn upside down. For starters let's read what we know. 4 times 10 to the power of negative 186th second of mid-year, June. I start this journal as a reminder to collect every essential piece of information I can collect. First, this world called Nirn has two major continents that have all the action, Tamriel in the west and Akavar in the east. Some parts of Tamriel resemble Earth's Europe and Africa and other parts are just as alien as it can get. Akavar from what I could remember it resembles Asia and it's the home of some beast folk that are hostile to both humans and elves. Tamriel, where I live has nine nations. Skyrim up in the north, home of Nords. Morrowind in the northeast, the home of Dunmer, Dark Elves. High Rock in the northwest home to Bretons. Hammerfell in the east home of Reguards. The Empire of Cyrodiil home to Imperials in the middle, south and east of Tamriel, Black March home to Argonian, Lizardfolk, in the southeast. Valinwood home to Busmer, Wood Elves, and elsewhere home to Kajiat, Catfolk, are two neighbor countries in south. And in the southwest lies Somerset Isle the home of the Altmer, High Elves, and the stronghold of the Altmeri Dominion. Last is the orcs known as the, Orsimmer, they are of elven blood but sometimes rumored to be beast folk, no one really likes them for any particular reason whatsoever, their home is the city of Orsinium located in High Rock and they have many villages around the world. Skyrim, where I live, is a kingdom with nine holds, province, each hold has a major city and few villages, the rift in the southeast has Riften city, Fakriath hold in the south has Fakriath city, the reach in the west has Markarth city, Hafingar hold in the northwest has Solitude city the capital of Skyrim and where the High King lives, Winterhold, the Pale, and Jalmarch hold are three holds that are located in the north, their cities are Winterhold, Donstar and Morthal in order. In the east lies Eastmarch hold and its city is Windhelm and lastly Whiterun hold in the middle of Skyrim with Whiterun city. And now to the important information. As Nirina doesn't allow us away from the orphanage too far, I could gather important information. First, forget about how Riften looked in game, it was just a small city with a few houses that anyone can count. But this, this is way too different, the city in the game is only the core area in this world. Riften has many inns and lots of houses, Mistvale Keep is so damn larger than the game and everything else is just that way. Even the orphanage which was a single story building in game is front of me a double story building with lots of rooms and wings, each wing has a supervisor and there are five wings, I live the headmistress's wing. When I first went out to the market square I saw lots of people that I never recognized and the square has much more stalls than the game. This is a real world for sure. I went out once with Nurina and saw the lower part of Riften it was scary and had many ruffians and lowlifes, too bad the master alchemist opened his store in such a place which we headed to. Newcomers may wonder why a city has a lower part, it was because half of the city was built on a Lake Henrik, this city was a two-story city. 4 times 10 to the power of negative 186th, 20th of sun's height, July. The weather in Skyrim changes from cold to freezing to cold to warm, I am a Nord so I don't complain, but the four seasons are reflected in the world awesomely, when it's autumn no tree has leaves, and rain becomes so annoying, when it's winter you a asterisk ass will catch frostbite if you stay an hour away from a heat source, when it's spring you can call that a cold spring but it's not that bad, and finally everyone's favorite is summer, everyone and their mothers just go swim in a lake and relax. This morning the whole orphanage accompanied with some guards and the Jarl's people to Lake Henrik and we played the whole day celebrating the day of sun's rest, I even saw the Blackbriar trio with their mother Maven. She always glares like someone I know, dear me, this is Maven Blackbriar the strongest woman in Skyrim and also the richest if I am not mistaken, she owns the Blackbriar metery and she is in cahoots with every evil faction in Skyrim from the Thieves Guild to the Dark Brotherhood of Assassins and also the goddamn Thalmer. During the day I saw Sibai Blackbriar Maven's oldest son glaring at me, what's with him? Is there any discrimination towards redheads in this world too? I knew it, I thought would happen someday, I mean I am the most handsome kid in the orphanage, or maybe rift in a hole. I close the journal and put it back, thank goodness it was written in an alien language. If anyone saw this I will die of shame, even though it recorded many memories that make me can't help but smile. Basically, all of my notes are all like this, I mean who can read them other than me? Yet for some reason Nurina saw them once and looked at them full of interest, I managed to trick her that this language is a secret code of mine that I made to prevent others from reading it, kids in my age do that sort of weird stuff, right? Actually, kids my age can't read at all, let alone studying tomes the way I do. 
Spell tomes or what referred to between mages as tomes are books that hold the techniques of manipulating magic. Currently I am learning the spells that Nirana gave me. Magic is all about manipulation and result I think you should take a look at snovel.siomicronm. Manipulation is how to use magic. The way humanoids use magic is different than dragons for example. The result is related to the effect and the target. The effects are absorb, damage, drain, detect, dispel, cure, weaken, control, alter, reflect, resist, conjure, command, fortify, restore and bend. These words are what the spells relay on, and they also something like the key word in every spell in the game. The target is more complicated but it's divided into attribute, energy, skill, or a special target like an undead or a dragon in the case of the specialized spells. A slash n, attribute is the max number of a certain state, for example, HP, 88 slash 100 100 is the attribute. Energy refers to health, stamina, and mana. Zvul.siomicron m. Skill refers to one of the 18 skills in Skyrim that has its own levels. Learning a spell in real life is so much time consuming and different from the game, in the game you buy the book and press learn the with a puff you learn the spell and the book disappears. In real life, it takes more time and books don't disappear, but mages are really selfish so they don't share their tomes with anyone, it also means that to get high level spells one need to do more than just paying money. Unlike the game, these books are very priceless, and due to that some spells and arts disappeared in time. Magic is divided into six major schools and they are, conjuring, illusion, destruction, alteration, restoration, and mysticism. A slash n, an explanation of the schools. Alteration, bound by the laws of nature, it changes the world around the caster so normal physical truths no longer hold. Effect, control and alter physical conditions and constitutions. Mysticism, is involving the manipulation of magical forces and boundaries to bypass the limitations of the physical world. Effects, absorb detect dispel reflect block resist magicka, spatial mark and recall, teleportation. Destruction, it is concerned with dealing damage to all forms of matter, both living and non-living, and with making matter more vulnerable to such damage. Effect, absorb drain damage energy slash drain attribute skill slash weakness element energy physical. Restoration, spells that heal, restore, and fortify the body's attributes and abilities, cure disease, and protect from or damage other malign, negative energy, influences. Effect, absorb restore attribute energy skill slash fortify attribute skill slash resist cure disease poison slash damage undead. Illusion, not bound by the laws of nature it changes the world around the caster so normal physical truths no longer hold. Effect, bend wills visibility sounds. Conjuration, the art of summoning creatures or items from another plane. Effect, summon and banish slash command didra and undead slash soul command. Spells are divided from novice, apprentice, adept, expert to master. With the mod balanced magic increasing the power of the spells with the player's level was possible and it seems possible in the real world too. As long as reality is this kind it only the matter between me, my mental capacity and how much time I have to learn the spells. 8 John Dare. Several days have passed, I was recording the new discoveries regarding my magic theory, and it was interesting to research such stuff. It was said that battle mages to research mages ratio was 3 colon 7 and I can see why. I could think of many ways to make some spells possible, but don't get me wrong creating a spell is a hard job that needs more than just understanding a theory. It needs the techniques of manipulation to be made with carefulness because magic energy can backfire and injure the user. My current problem is lack of experience in techniques, they are the way you command your magic to manifest like casting by putting magic directly into shape or shouting like dragons to force magic into some sort of form. While making the magic form you need to understand which form goes with which effect and how you fix that on a target to create a result. As making my own theories I improve rapidly day by day. One thing that is annoying me is that my magicka regeneration is slow. This can be helped by a potion or an enchanted artifact, both cost money but an artifact will last longer. To make an artifact one needs a soul gem. Soul gems are graded from petty, lesser, common, greater, grand and black. One needs to perform a soul trap on something they kill to trap a soul into the nearest soul gem. The game was a little bugged in that regard so I used a mod like Smart Souls and Mysticism The Lost Art. I also added a mod called Transmute and Few Soul Gems which allows one to transmute two empty soul gems from a certain grade into an empty one from the next level. Fusion is about filled soul gems but it takes three to make one higher. These are all very handy spells to serve the art of enchanting which I consider the most important craft. The crafts in the game are enchanting, alchemy and blacksmithing. With a mod called Honed Metal one could ask any blacksmith to make them a piece of armor and upgrade it, that's of course a real option in any world, it also works with enchanting but that's a different story in my opinion. I don't really like to waste time on blacksmithing but it's a different story with enchanting and alchemy. Enchanting your own gear is the one way to make a good build in game and you can bypass the normal enchanters by adding two effects on one piece of gear, enchanting needs souls gems to put a soul in an item to work as its magic carrier. Enchanting weapons is different from enchanting an item you wear, the game didn't explain this but for weapons souls act as a fuel once you used all the power endowed within the enchanted weapon it will just run out, so you need another soul gem to recharge the weapon once again. Enchanted wearables, on the other hand, doesn't need to use the soul power in them to show effect, once they get equipped the soul in the item will fuse itself with the soul of the user to add the effect. 
and unlike in games there is more freedom in enchanting depending on the item's quality. Also in game one needed to learn an enchantment by destroying an already enchanted item. Too wasteful yet in reality it's much better compared. All you need to do is to study the effect and copy it on another item for practice. Alchemy is the most rewarding craft in game. You can use a mod like Harvest Overhaul to increase the harvest rate because the game's original rate was very low unrealistically. After having the ingredients you need to mix them with others of a matching effects to make a greater effect. It may seem like the game but it's totally different. There are more tools to be used. You need to mix ingredients into a pot and heat them in either water or alcohol. Some ingredients need to be mashed using mortar and pistol. And with a mod called Complete Alchemy and Cooking Overhaul many potions and items like bombs could be created. Magical alchemy at its best ladies and gentlemen. Today was the day when Nurina gave me a lesson in enchanting. Enchanting is a bit of a luxury but it's an essential part of mages lives. You simply can make a piece of gear that allows your magicka to regenerate faster or increase a certain attribute like health. These are the most direct and common enchantment. They are also the most efficient. With a mod called Winter Mist more enchantment could be added to the game and they are in this world too. These are pretty useful enchantments in my opinion. To enchant, one needs an enchanting table or one could simply make one, it isn't hard but it needed materials. A troll skull, few candles, an amethyst and a bone meal, powder. What happens next is to draw a star-shaped magic circle with the bone meal, put a candle on the five star edges and place the amethyst in the troll skull. Trolls has three eyes and their third eye is in the forehead and that's where we place the amethyst, place the skull between two star edges on the circle and you are pretty much done. After all of that is done, the circle will attach the soul to the item placed on it by sucking in from the soul gem. During the process one must activate his magic to endow a certain effect on the soul. While the process of soul attaching is happening, the item turns into an item with a soul that has a certain effect called an enchanted item or magical item. Best enchanters can add another effect making the soul inside the item has two effects, but that's a master level technique. After the lesson was over Nurina gave me few worthless items to enchant and it turned out that I am talented in handling magic, it was thanks to my theory in mysticism that made my magic control so as Nurina's into a top notch control. Days passed peacefully and we welcomed a new member to the gang, Akara the super cute Kajiatai girl. Rho Alpha and D Alpha S Nu Omicron V Epsilon L Omicron M. We took her around with us in our runs around the city, she turned out to be very talented in haggling. Isolde fell in love with Akara after that and invited her to be a trading partner in the future. I really like where this is going. Isolde in the future will return back to Whiteron which means Akara might be there. Let's charm Akara about Whiteron, saying it is a safe city and also a trading hub will make that girl listen. Today the five of us planned on making some money by selling sweet treats. Last time Isolde failed to sell and she was in a gloomy mood. This time I suggested making a big move. Why don't we make a performance while selling our stuff? It will be legit and the neither the guards nor the traders will make a fuss about it. I made my ultimate suggestion. What kind of performance? Wolfer was a bit timed so he asked cautiously. I looked at Spitty and asked, remember the songs I thought you, teach it to Wolfer and Akara, then I and Isolde will handle the rest. Everyone looked at Spitty, I thought her few songs from my past life that was sung be vocal bands, it was not much different to the way bards sing in Skyrim. One of my favorite is Loituma, even Poka the original Finnish song, not the Japanese ripoff. I taught her many other songs I remembered. Svidi was to sing, Wolfer was to play on the flute and Akara could do the drum so it was pretty much well planned. On the other hand, Yaselda would sell the sweet treats to the crowd and I would collect the money for the performance. We picked a good spot in the market square and made the plan into practice. The song was rewrote by me so it was according to the lore of the world and it told the story about a certain warrior who fought a great monster with his axe and saved his maiden fair trapped on top of the tower that the bear nested in. In this part of the world this story fitted greatly, and the Nords would greatly love it and so it was. We gathered money like bees on honey, the hat I used to gather coin in was filled to its prim with copper and some generous paid silver. That was a huge hit. The treats sold quickly too, Isolde was at her wit's end, haha witness the power of the 21st century. After the day was over we had two out of breath siblings and a do cheerful coin diggers, and there was me the mastermind of the day. After the performance few bards approached Svitty and invited her to the college and gave her recommendations, Wolfer was invited too, but to no surprise, no one wanted anything to do with other races like Akara the Kajiat. It wasn't unexpected but it was good to make sure that these two siblings have gotten a ticket out of Riften, that means Wolfer will get to live and Svitty won't get chased out like what happened in the game. This time my success was at changing and affecting the game lore for the first time, one thing I was sure of I must not interfere with the big events until 4 times 10 to the power of negative 200 first, the time when the main game events will start. Handing the big coin purse to Isolde, she looked at it as if she had he very own child, she held it in two hands and was about to make a speech. But an unexpected turn of events happened. A taller figure with a covered face ran behind Isolde and snatched the purse from her. Isolde cried out and directed a glare at the figure and shouted thief. I had the blood rush in my head and chased after the thief, Akara was the second to follow, the rest wasn't as fast as a thief in training and a Kajiatai girl so they lagged behind. The thief gave his all while running, he seemed knowledge about the city and kept avoiding obstacles and kept on pulling stuff to block the road behind him. 
Akira had no problem whatsoever in moving past these obstacles, but I as a human would have trouble or that how it should have happened, I have made my own version of parkour while training with Vex and the others from the Thief Guild a bit of a time ago and it showed its full might in this situation. Many people started to notice and I could even feel some presences following from the sides, I could see Brinjolf and Delvin with a figure clad in a big cloak and a hood behind them, I think I saw these three in the performance. I could feel some gazes form the meteries window, it was Maven and a girl beside her that looked similar, even Nurana saw me and Akara running while she was shopping and started following. I and Akara were so nimble that we started having fun and began competing who would catch the thief first. The thief felt us getting closer and then made a turn after the general goods store, there was a ladder that reached the roof, I made a jump and was about to catch the thief's foot but he moved faster, I had no choice but to climb after him. Reaching the roof four masked figures waited for the thief and he handed the money purse to the one with expensive looking clothes, I could see that as I have already reached and met eye to eye with these punch. Hand it over. Akara roared at them. The person with the purse was amused at her anger, he clearly had a plan in mind as his he winked to his cronies, the started to move and surrounded me and Akara. I and Akara stood back to back, I smell mead from them. Akara said in a soft voice. They were not much older than us, they were around 15 and we were outnumbered at that. They are the boys from the meadery. I replied as I noticed their identities, the person with the purse in his hands was clearly Sivai Blackbriar. So he started to pick on me finally. I have foreseen that since a while ago, he always gave me bad glares, people would most certainly cower if a Blackbriar glared at them but I kind of like to take a challenge head on. I make a move as I pick a dagger from my boots, it was a common way to hide a dagger, but not for a 10 years old of course. Akara brandished her claws, Kajiatai claws are on pars with a good early weapon in the game. The metery boys halt but Sibai seemed dissatisfied, he said, they are just two brats. I think you should take a look at snovel.siomicronm. Well he is right, we are no match for them, so how about that? I launched the novice lightning spell sparks front of Sibai's feet. A slash n, sparks is a channeling spell which you keep firing like a lightning thrower, it's the weakest lightning spell. F asterisk ck. Sibai cursed as he jumped back with terror in his eyes, magic is magic after all. The metery boy retreat immediately, Sibai shouted trying to hide his terror f asterisk -er. how dare you. A Kara stiffened as she heard his words, of course she knew that my magic words have been said. I can't resist a taunting with the word dare in it, everyone in the orphanage knows that, if you want to get hit say how dare you, and you will trigger me immediately. My smile turns devilish as I already made my mind, the five idiots became more afraid as I took a step towards them, Sibai was going to piss himself as magic was still appearing on my left hand. Suddenly he made a move towards the edge of the roof, then he held the purse in a throwing pose and threatened I'll throw it in the canal. There was indeed a big canal in the street, people started to notice and the atmosphere turned stiff. I look at Akara and she nodded, that girl is smart and already went down from the roof. I walk towards Sibai again, he got more nervous and he suddenly make his move I dare you go after it uf asterisk -er. He threw the coin purse towards the empty air and it was going to certainly fall into the canal of the lower part of the city, that's a four story height for you. My heart was going crazy as the purse rose in the air, my legs moved on their own and I ran towards the edge and jumped as after the purse. Dare I s my, a slash n, third person pov. Few hours before the confrontation of John and Sibai, a tall figure clad in a brown cloak with a big hood descended the stairs that lead from the upper city in Riften to the undercity. The figure carried a big battle axe on its back but its steps were soft and quiet. Upon arriving to the lower parts the figure stopped front of a gate with iron bars, what lied beyond that gate with a hellhole of stink and moist known as the ratway. The figures passed through the gate with ease not minding the smell at all. The ratway was the sewers of Riften it was dim and filled with unexpected encounters, as the figure walked in the tunnels, a torch appeared illuminating the darkness. The figure stretched its hand to take the torch but it suddenly came to halt, looking around the figure noticed something that made a strange pose and then took the torch from the wall. A click sounded and a strange iron ball with spikes fell from the top towards the figure but it didn't hit. The figure sighed and shook its head helplessly, then took the torch and kept on advancing. After few turns the figure arrived at a door, on the door, there was a sign saying the ragged flagon. It was known as the ghost tavern as it was the location where the thieves guild members would gather yet it wasn't known where it was as the ratway was as its name gave, a damnable maze. Few could find this place and that figure was one of them. After pushing open the doors, a circular chamber with an uneven surface appeared, in the middle of it water gathered as if it was a pool, and around its sides, a path to walk around the pool was there. The figure walked to the right until other figures of people in black leather appeared. The place on the other end of the chamber was that of what resembles a bar with few stools and some table and chairs. As the figure wanted to advance to the bar a young giant man appeared to block its pass. We are full on customers the man tried to sound scary. The figure in brown cloak only cupped its right hand into a fist and buried it deep into the young man's stomach, the man fell to his knees and with hand on the ground and a hand on his stomach it made an inappropriate sound. The figure moved its left leg and landed a stomp on the man's head sending him to the dream realm. Few steps later the other few figures around the bar was intensified from what happened to their lookout, one of them was bald with a rough skin made an eye contact with the figure, the figure immediately headed towards him. As the figure sat on the chair opposite to the bald man it removed its hood and cloak. 
What appeared was a woman with red wavy hair and sharp blue eyes, she wore an armor known as the Nordic carved armor, she wore it without a padding armor so her arms were full on view until her armored bracers so were her legs. The bald man was Delvin and the red woman was Hilda, it was a meeting that didn't happen in few years. Mama came for a visit. Hilda said while snatching the sweet roll front of Delvin. Delvin was surprised by the sudden visit but he was not in the position to argue with that scary woman. He looked at Brinjolf and said, your friend John is doing okay. Brinjolf was in a daze from the strange situation but he nodded to Delvin. Brinjolf was it? Come and lead me to him. Hilda demanded like a boss and Delvin nodded to Brinjolf confirming her words. Brinjolf could only walk in the front past to the passed out lookout, he exited the round chamber followed by Delvin and Hilda, and headed outside the ratway. The three headed to the market square and saw a large crowd, they frowned, that's John's place. Brinjolf was Delvin's eye on John so he knew most of what was John up to. After a while the three passed the crowd and saw five kids in an unusual scene. A girl was singing, a boy was playing the flute, a Kajiatai girl was playing the drum, a girl was selling sweet treats and a boy was walking around interacting with people holding a hat which has some coins in. The crowd interacted with the unusual scene very smoothly, the song was so Nordic and the music supporting it was so synced with the song, the kids made vocal music with humming and words which was even more than just what a normal bard would do, it was a clearly new style that all people became curious about, the sweet treats of the kids sold by the lone girl, the boy with a hat collected money from people and was moving nimbly while showing off his half-dancing way of walking and the band of three that stood on a platform made of crates kept singing, no matter how anyone looked at it, that was a selling business of a punch of talented kids. Hilda looked at the boy with a hat and was taken aback but she smiled and gave him a silver coin. The kid was not shy and made a bow with a smile and a wink to the lady. He was doing that with the girls and ladies who were paying for the band to sing more. After some time the crowd dispersed and the kids gathered in a corner carrying away their stuff and gathering the coins in a single purse hurriedly. After they finished the girl that sold the sweets held the purse and was about to say something to her friends but a figure ran behind her and snatched the purse. The red-haired kid gave a chase followed by the Kajiat girl. Hilda was about to throw her axe at the thief but she held herself back. She followed after the kids who gave a chase and she was about to give a hand when she saw a very strange scene. The Kajiat girl way of running was like a beast in the woods it was so simple yet very nimble and fast. The red boy, on the other hand, ran in the most interesting way she has ever seen. He jumped over obstacles like a clown, he moved in a way that was so refined and artistic that made him look like he was doing it with ease. Delvin himself was surprised, he looked at Brinjolf and asked, what was that just now? That's his style that I once told you about, he called it free running or something, I don't know how he made it but it is really hard to master. Brinjolf spilled the beans immediately. The three looked at John's moves and followed to where he chased the figure, along the way they pumped into Nurina who joined them without questioning Hilda's identity, after John and Akara chased the thief to a rooftop, the four could see the confrontation from distance. After John threatened the big boys with magic, Hilda was surprised, even more, she never expected that a ten years old kid had arcane skills like magic and martial skills like his so-called free running in his arsenal at such age. When the mood stiffened on the rooftop the Kajiat girl ran down and John ran towards the boss of the thieves on the edge of the roof. It was a sight to witness as the money purse was thrown towards the canal under the city and John flying after it. Dare I ask my surname F asterisk e -e -er. John's shout was heard by everyone in that part of the city. The time seemed like it had slowed down. The blood of everyone boiled as they heard those scary words. A thunderous roar accompanied the voice of that child, it was a power that only true Nords could muster. It was a war cry. Hilda witnessed it, Nurina witnessed it, Maven witnessed it, Delvin and Brinjolf witnessed it yet they withstood it. Other people with weak hearts could only shiver from the power of that cry. John made a free fall after the purse and caught it, then he dived into the canal. Both Hilda and Nurina could hold their excitement no more and spoke in unison that's my boy. The atmosphere froze at this point again as the two beauties looked to each other with a surprise. Anyway, from that day John was officially known as John Dare. Nine two mothers. Brinjolf ran towards the canal and started looking for John, a moment later John swam up and was a bit dizzy. Working the whole morning, chasing a thief through the city, jumping from a high rooftop to a deep canal while shouting a war cry certainly took a toll on a 10 years old child, even though his mental age is about 35, it could only add to the burden on the body. Brinjolf fished the dizzy boy out from the canal and carried him back. The four kids from the orphanage caught up to Brinjolf and took the already passed out John from him. Wolfer carried John and the girls took the purse, they kept it away from people's sight. John's war cry didn't scare them as he did not consider them to be hostile. On the rooftop the thieves were already at the brink of losing their souls, Sibai who was the target of the war cry was experiencing true terror, he was going to have PTSD after this for sure. One must know that war cry is a racial skill only gained by Nords. Through it, warriors could conjure all their fighting spirit and bloodlust, then manifest it into a thunderous cry. The cry can devastate the morale of any weaker enemies and would make normal people faint from terror. Only strong warriors could make this cry, Ulfric Stormcloak the Jarl of Eastmarch and Codluck White Mane the Harbinger of the Companions were known living figures who were witnessed shouting a war cry. For a small kid from an orphanage to use such a skill, his future is certainly that of a great warrior, when the Companions hear of this, they would send their people to invite him to join. 
Outside Skyrim there were mercenary guilds but in Skyrim there were the companions, they are one of Skyrim's four guilds in game and they are those people who come out to solve problems when the coin is right, they avoided political conflicts, so instead of calling them mercenaries they better to be called adventurers. The legend of Iskrammer and his 500 companions is a basic knowledge for all Nords. A warrior from a faraway continent in the north was. He is one of the most legendary heroes of men, who played a pivotal role in the ascendancy of humans on the continent of Tamriel, but that's a story we will continue in another time. Back to the present and few meters away from the passed out John, Hilda, and Nurina stared at each other while Delvin was holding his forehead. He looked to both Nurina this is Hilda, John's mother, and Nurina is the headmistress of the orphanage. I see. Hilda was the first to speak, she totally forgot about that. I am Nurina Aaron, a pleasure. Nurina turned cold a formal. Hilda Firemane. Thank you for raising John all these years. Hilda spoke politely. Nurina narrowed her eyes which turned cold and sharp, you here to take him, and she kicked right into the main topic. Hilda gave a wry smile while looking down then shook her head saying, he's better off without me. Nurina felt the sadness in Hilda's voice, she wasn't going to give up her apprentice and the person she considered a family without a fight from the start, but she sympathized with Hilda. This way, Nurina walked ahead leading Hilda to the direction of the orphanage, Hilda followed after she whispered something to Delvin who nodded to her, he then signaled to Brynjolf and both disappeared in the crowd. A while later Hilda who was in her cloak and hood reached the orphanage with Nurina, and it seems the kids have already reached her before them. Passing the entrance and to the next floor the found the kids grouped around John's bed, Isolde, and Akara kept nursing him. Nurina arrived to the side of the bed and handed a blue potion to the girls, she instructed them and led Hilda to her room. Hilda looked at John without nearing him, she felt like a hole was being dug in her heart, she then followed after Nurina. Nurina opened her room, led Hilda in and closed the door tightly, she offered her a seat and sat opposite to her. Hilda sat and rested her big battle axe to a wall then removed her cloak and looked around the room. It was a big enough room with full wooden furniture and some foreign objects that clearly didn't originate from Skyrim, a basket that held some staves and many shelves packed with books, a wide bed and a few pots that had some medicinal herbs and flowers planted in, it was a gorgeous room that fitted the Dunmer style. Silence took the lead of the conversation but Nurina as the host had to cut it, she looked at the bucket beside her and fished out a bottle, she offered it to Hilda who with a thanks gladly took it. It was Haunting Brew Mead, Nord's favorite. A slash n, maybe I can get a sponsorship lol. After a sip, Hilda spoke, so, the magic from a while ago, he learned it from you. She asked. One must know that Nords are not fond of magic and some even hate it, they don't mind healing and enchanted weapon though. He is talented and hardworking, for a Nord with a talent that surpasses some elves in magic is something that history has rarely recorded. Nurina bragged as much as she could. Hilda smiled and took another sip, his father also liked magic. She gave off a smile yet it was filled with sadness. I am sorry. Nurina gave her condolences. Oh, no, he's alive, probably Hilda made a not sure expression and shrugged her shoulders. Probably. Nurina was puzzled. The Thalmer failed to kill him in both the Great War and Hammerfell resistance, yet he killed them like a sickle in dry weed. That was Hilda's turn to brag. Rho Alpha and D Alpha S N Omicron V Epsilon L dot C Omicron M. The war ended, and as a war hero, shouldn't that treaty of white gold something protect him and his family? Nurina was a bit confused here. Hilda finished the bottle in one go and looked at Nurina with narrow eyes then said, unless. Nurina thought for a second about what Hilda meant with unless she soon found the answer that I think you should take a look at snovel.c omicron m. Unless you are from the blades. That was the only logical answer. The blades are chenemy to the Thalmer, they were the personal guards of the emperor after the Akavari invasion in 1 times 10 to the power of negative 2703rd. Formerly known as the Dragon Guard they served Emperor Rimani, and evolved through history to be known as the Blades Guards of the Emperor and his intelligence operatives. The White Gold Concordant that was signed to end the Great War between the Empire and the Aldmeri Dominion, it stated on some outrageous terms like disbanding the Blades and outlawing the worshipping of the Ninth God of the Empire Talos. Nurina made a very worried face after discovering such a truth about John's family, she even felt sad for Hilda and her husband. During the war, I was one of the Nords who were dispatched to the Empire as reinforcement. And after the treaty, I felt betrayed. The Empire abandoned its best of the best warriors and forsook mighty Talos. I was so ashamed of them but I couldn't do anything. After that, we heard that Hammerfell refused the treaty and made preparation for war. I traveled there with my brothers and met with a former commander from the Blades, he was to be John's father. Commander Joan Rad Firemane. Hilda kept telling the story to Nurina, who was so immersed in listening. After some time they reached the part when Hammerfell decided to make a treaty with the Dominion which was known as the Second Treaty of Stroh's Emkai. There Joan Rad and Hilda felt uneasy. The Thalmer, the ruling faction in the Dominion will for sure send their spies and assassins to root out all of the unwanted trouble in Hammerfell. Due to some reason, Jonrad couldn't leave Hammerfell, so he sent his most trusted man Fuldame with Hilda to Skyrim. Hilda was pregnant at that time and couldn't fight so she had to hide in the Empire as a deter to lose the Thalmer on her tail and she finally made it a year later to Skyrim. Nurina was so in awe from the grand adventure and was taking a huge liking on Hilda, different from her first image of the mother who abandoned her child, Hilda was like some heroine in her eyes, 
Nirina talked about herself before coming from Morrowind and talked about her life with John, and about their tiny adventures and discoveries. Hilda was at her wit's end from what she heard. A child devolving a theory in magic was something unheard of, and his accomplishments and studies were on the PAR with some scholar from the Mages Guild or the College of Winterhold. But one thing I don't understand. Nirina asked, why did the Thalmer target you until now? I mean it has been ten years and I am sure you have your secrets but you don't have to hide all that much. Hilda was astonished of Nirina's observation. She looked at her and sighed, that is indeed another story. Yet the ones that Thalmer looking for is not me or my husband. Her eyes turned cold and her killing bloodlust was clear in her voice. They are after John, the F asteriskers are after my son. Nirina's eye shrunk and she stood up, her expression was like a scared cat that was about to cry. Her soft voice was shaken and she only muttered why, why, while looking at Hilda's angry face. Hilda rudely stretched her arm and took another bottle from Nurina's booze bucket. Looking at it was a black briar mead. She opened it and walked to the window. There was a beautiful view of Lake Henrik. Ten years ago on the other shore of the lake, she stood and gave her child to a thief so he can live in peace away from her. The night that followed her for a year went missing after that night and she traveled to her clan for hiding among them ever since. Twenty-one years ago while I was fighting in the war, an accident happened in the Imperial Library. The inner circles of the commanders only heard about this but it was revealed on a later date to the people. The Disappearance of the Elder Scrolls Hilda stopped talking giving Nurina a breather after so many surprises. Nurina was moving around the room not sure how to handle so many information. The Elder Scrolls, such a name was only associated with legends and major accidents that shook the world and changed the face of the era itself. The Elder Scrolls also called the Drick prophecies a slash n, Drick from Dre, the opposite of Dedra, good gods, bad gods, are scrolls of unknown origin and number which simultaneously archive both past and future events. The number of the scrolls is unknown not because of their immense quantity, but because the number itself is unknowable, as the scrolls do not exist in accountable form. They are fragments of creation from outside time itself, and their use in divining prophecies is but a small part of their power. They simultaneously do not exist, yet always have existed. A slash n, witness the power of the wiki, mwahaha. No, seriously speaking the Elder Scrolls is so important that the name of the game itself is the Elder Scrolls v, Skyrim. No one would mention the two words Elder and Scrolls together in such manner unless there is something big happening. What does the Elder Scrolls have to do with John? Nurina finally organized her thoughts and asked. She finally arrived at the three points of issue. Thalmer, Elder Scrolls and John. Ten years ago before I know I was pregnant with John, I met a moth priest from the cult of ancestor moth in a market in Hammerfell. He was blind but it looked like he could see me. He came to my direction like mad and when he tripped and fell he crawled on all fours till he got to me. He was speaking like mad and said I found it. Not one, not two, but three. You carry a child who is fated to carry three scrolls of the gods. I knocked the priest out and ran away from the market. When Joan Rad heard of it he devised a plan to lead us away from the eyes of the Thalmer. Few months later I gave birth to a boy and ran away with him from Hammerfell just as Joan Rad planned. John Hild was born year four times ten to the power of 181st named after his father and me. A year later, I arrived to Skyrim and you know the rest. A slash n, cult of ancestor moth are a cult of people who can read the Elder Scrolls but they get blind after doing so. So that how was it really happening, such a child carrying such fate is sure scary. Not any parents could deal with such prophecy, yet these two kept their cool and made the right choices under pressure. That was admirable effort but too bad Joan Rad was nowhere to be found. So what should we do after that? Nurina was already planning ahead, he can't stay in the orphanage after the age of 15 and truthfully I was planning to take him with me to Winterhold. With his ideas, he can make more wonderful achievements in the arcane arts. Hilda nodded, that is a good idea but he needs to be more capable and survive the trials of coming of age on his own. Hilda added. Coming of age? Don't tell me you mean that Nord nonsense tradition. Nurina was angry at such words. Those are the traditions. He must learn how to fight like a Nord. I know you don't like and neither do I, what kind of mother would send her child to such challenge? But that's for his best. Hilda resolve was firm. Nurina understood, compared to such challenge what lies in the future of such a kid is much more dangerous. I understand, I'll arrange for some people to instruct him in hunting and fighting Sai his talent will support him no matter what he does, I am sure of it. Nurina came to the same resolution as Hilda. Truthfully speaking he can make a war cry at the age of 10. You really raised a dragon Hilda remarked with a smirk. Fufu. Nurina laughed softly, the sweat on her face was already wiped away and she was feeling better. She offered Hilda a bigger bottle and opened a one for herself. The two mothers sat and laughed a meaningful soft laughs, they were already releasing some bloodlust about the fight ahead. This meeting of the two monsters was a meeting that the Thalmer will surely regret they could not prevent in the not far future. 10 wasn't this just a mod? I really wanted to ask whether or not should I continue writing in multiple POVs, between first and third, or should I just make it only third person? Leave a suggestion at the comment section. First person POV again but in hallucination. This is one heavy head I have here. I was in a canal right? What is that? Looks so fluffy? I am a manly manly man who like fluffy stuff please don't think about it make. I want to hold it for a bit. Ah, uh, here? Feels just like perfect. Ouch. Darkness again? Maybe heaven don't take fluff lovers, oh I am in Skyrim. 
So it must be Sovngarde, which prefer warriors and stuff, damn it to Oblivion then, as long as it fluff. A slash n, in Skyrim, Sovngarde is Valhalla-like place where noble warriors consider it heaven after death. Oblivion is the realm of Dedra and it is considered hell to the most. Third person POV. John passed out again. On Akira's hands this time. He was sleep talking and the kids looked close to hear what he was saying, but it wasn't in the common language so everyone thought he was seeing something nice, but when they turned back they felt a shriek coming from Akira who was the closest to the bed. Apparently John has grabbed her tail unconsciously and Akira reacted too fast. She punched him back to oblivion. The kids looked to Akira with strange eyes. She felt awkward and said she was sorry. Boys felt bad for John but Isolde snorted and joined Akira's side while saying a well-deserved punch. It was strange that Neuruna hasn't woken up to the racket, but no one was as close to Neuruna than John, he was the only one who can break into her room normally. An hour later John regained consciousness. A slash N, first person POV again. Let's never go after fluffy stuff half asleep ever again, damn it my face hurts. I had to apologize to Akira but it seemed everything was okay. Next they said that Neuruna went into her room with a friend last night and hasn't gotten out yet, should I go in? Let's wait till noon. I'll stay in the wing for now and fool around with the boys. Normally we ate and cleaned, then everyone was with his own duty. Today's cleaning duty was on me and Wolfer, everyone cleaned their beds and belongings, then it was all gathered in an old sack, we left the boys room to throw out the trash sack. Each wing was has three rooms. Boys room, girls room, caretakers room, and a hall that links them, the hall serves as a dining hall and teaching room. Unlike others, Neurona tends to teach the kids how to read and write, so the hall also served as a classroom. I, as Neurona's assistant has many privileges among the kids. I learned the most and I lived in the orphanage the most. I normally don't have a place to go back to but I am not really thinking about it. While taking the trash out Wolfer was trying to talk about something and he looked a bit down. What is wrong? Out with it. I asked him. He is a big guy with tall black hair just like his sister, but he is the shy one. Thank God I was tall or it would look awkward lecturing him. John my friend you see? The other day, you and the others really were impressive. I can't sing like sis or do amazing stuff like you and Akira, even Isolde is a money digger on her own league. So I was thinking for a bit, if I am really as good as you guys. He was speaking and looking around. I get it, so it is like this. Listen man, I know what you are thinking about, I understand it and I felt like that once. That was me saying the truth, about a lifetime ago though. Really? I mean, you. Wolfer questioned with a funny expression. Look at me, I grew up with no parents, has no inheritance, and clearly the ones gave birth to me didn't want such a handsome child, so they gave me up. I mean I had to deal with that when I was younger, really depressed me, but I threw it to the back of my mind and did the best I could. That was me spouting bullsh asterisk t. Wolfer was baffled. Rho alpha and d alpha s n omicron v epsilon l dot c omicron m. Listen. Point is, you haven't done everything in the world to see what are you good at, right? I smirked. You are right, I haven't. But the others and you discovered yourselves easily though. Wolfer thought but he wasn't an idiot. I really like that guy, even though we are 10 years old, he has the guts to speak for himself. They found what they are good at themselves inside the orphanage easily because what they could do was possible inside the orphanage. I remarked. Then, he was still timid though. That means you have to look outside the orphanage, big guy. I was speaking like some gym coach now. We are already outside so I know someone I want to introduce you to. I took the lead and Wolfer followed. Few minutes later near the market square one could hear many tinkering sound, it was a forge under a shed next to a house. Come see Balimund perform miracles with steel, eh, a large man with a big mustache made an appearance, wearing a blacksmith outfit that didn't quite match his blonde hair. Wolfer jumped back scared. That was Balimund for you. Balimund is a known NPC in game, he was the only blacksmith in Riften and he always says those words to greet the players when they approach his workshop, he is very proud with his craft and his personality is extremely friendly. I rolled my eyes backward to his greeting and was saying just stop it in my mind. Old man Balimund, this big guy is Wolfer. As you can see he is big and sturdy, and he seems to have interest in blacksmithing. I made a salesman from a second-hand cheap store offer and introduced Wolfer. Wolfer was taken aback, he said did I, but I raised my voice to cover his. Hmm, I see. Young John, it was a loss you didn't want to continue learning from me though, yet any friend of John is a friend of mine. Balimund said with a sad tone. I've met with Balimund a year ago and did a service for him, he wanted some fire salts which is a rare alchemy ingredient and I brought him some through my connections with the thieves guild. He was so excited and offered to teach me his technique and how to be a blacksmith. I wasn't excited about it but I learned for a bit. My magic study is much more important for me but it was fun to learn how to make good metal, I might start learning again later. This guy has a good head on his shoulders, and he is 10 years old just like me, he even can carry weights as much as grown man, you won't get disappointed. I continued to make Wolfer look good. You seem like a Kajiat merchant today, but let's see how long will he last. Balimund laughed and led Wolfer in, I kept watching and learned few stuff myself. Wolfer could really withstand the heat from the smelter, and he could hammer the metal for longer than even me, frankly I wasn't expecting any of that. Your friend is good and determined. Balimund said with a wide smile. Fine then, you'll take him in. I asked. He's from the orphanage, right? What are his circumstances? Balimund questioned. 
He'll leave probably for solitude. His sister was invited to the Bard's College and we don't want her miss a good chance. After she finishes her study they will settle in Whiterun. I informed Bali Mund about the sibling's circumstance. I see. Blacksmithing doesn't get much talented people nowadays. They all want to become warriors and it would be a waste if I didn't teach any of you too. I might really regret it. Bali Mund was always dishonest. Fits Wolfer well in my opinion. But during the coming five years he have to be my assistants, I'll give him coin and food as well as training. That's between you and him, anyway you have my blessing. I said, after that it wasn't my business. I said I am going back first and left Wolfer at Baylimund's. Back to the orphanage. I just barely passed the main door and what meets me is grumpy face glaring. So Oblivion hasn't swallowed you yet. Grelid taunted. Not before you, old hag. I taunted back and don't think the heaven is so blind to leave you on Nirn with no one to torment you. Grelid face darkened but she couldn't retort at this one, I guess me performing a war cry the other day made my reputation in town sore. War cry? How impressive? I even surprised myself. It's strange though, I remember I had installed a mod called Imperious Races of Skyrim. That mod should overhaul the racial aspects and make new powers for each race, war cry was supposed to be removed by that mod, yet that didn't happen. Maybe some mods didn't get transmigrated with me or something but I'll need to make more experiments on that. Anyways, powers in the game had one day cooldown duration, it also explains why my head feels so light. Moving on I arrived to the wing and informed Spitty about her brother's new job. She was happy for him. What a good sister. What impressed me was that Nurina hasn't woken up yet. This was a first time in forever for Nurina to be so carefree. I got to see what the hell is going on. I arrived at the door of Nurina's room and knocked hard, yet no response, seriously I am worried now. I pushed the door but it won't budge. I examined it and it was locked with magic. Fine, here I come, open. I used the magic that opened doors, the door opened. What met me was darkness and a strong suffocating smell of something I could identify as alcohol. I originally hated alcohol smell. Like it or not I am a milk drinker. I closed the door hurriedly and went to the hall to catch a breath, there I remembered something. I ran to my bed in the corner of the boys room and opened my chest. There was a gift that a senior made for me before he leaves the orphanage, it was a Nordic war horn. I took the thing and went back near in his room, covered my nose and went running into the dark room as I removed the curtains and opened the window to the lakeside. Turning around I blew the horn near the bed. What happened next was the funniest thing I have ever seen since I came to this world, Nirina, and apparently, her friend was running from the bed waving around their arms in panic, screaming some words I couldn't understand but whatever. Well, mission accomplished. I waited until they calmed down and then took out two potions I prepared beforehand, it was something to cure the hangover. John you can't make such a cruel thing to a person who has such a nasty hangover, my head is about to split. Nirina complained. She was holding her head with a hand and drank the potion with another. When I offered the potion to the other person I started to see her clearly. She was ignored with some strong arms and thighs, her hair was fire red yet mine was a bit darker, she had the similar blue eyes as me. Damn, I thought I was unrivaled under heaven yet there is someone who is as beautiful as me. The woman looked at me in panic then she took the potion and looked away while drinking it in one go. I must admit sleeping after drinking for three days in a row is an impressive feat on its own, I even had to wake you up with a horn. I made some joke to make them clear up. Three days. The two women screamed in unison at what I said. Nah, I was joking. It was just a day, but it is afternoon already. I already achieved my purpose so more than that is too much. Is he always like this? The red woman looked at Nirina and asked. Just don't let him take advantage of you, you will regret it if he started to give you a lecture. Nirina said it. Yep, I am that nasty. The two sighed and already started to sober. I'll go make them some coffee. Yes, you read it right. Coffee. Our lord and savior? Coffee is not popular in Skyrim but it can be imported from different locations. Originally there was no coffee in the lore of Skyrim but it existed in the Elder Scrolls Online. It came to the world of Skyrim through a mod called Eli's Coffee Mod by Eleonora, one of Skyrim legendary modders. It was the right choice to install that mod. Well, I made some coffee for the women and they thanked me for it. So Nurina has made a friend finally, I can leave this orphanage while being not worried in the future. Please treat her well. I turned into a mother mode and made fun out Nurina. Nurina was flustered in a blush and the red woman laughed her lungs out that I think you should take a look at snovel.siomicron m. Stinking brat, you come back from oblivion and first thing you do is to wake up I, your old mother with a horn and make fun of me two times in a row. Nirina was huffing and puffing after she shouted at me. Well that was fun, I haven't laughed like this in ages. Ah my stomach hurts. The red woman was already in the ground after Nirina's retort. Indeed it was funny. The other day I must have worried everyone to death and making a better mood is my responsibility. Fine, fine geez. Breakfast will be ready, a Kara will bring a tray in a bit. I said while leaving. Wait, a voice called for me and it was the red woman. Yes. I turned around. I am Hilda. The red woman introduced herself. I really like the name. I am John. Nice to meet ya. I made my signature two finger salute. Hey John, bring me that axe. Hilda asked me while pointing at a big axe resting on the wall. Damn woman. I wanted to retort. Isn't that a carved Nord axe and armor? This woman is the real deal. Is that some sort of test? I asked while not really want to embarrass myself. 
The woman was taken aback for a second. Yes, I'll teach you how to fight so I want you to bring me that axe. Really, it wasn't me who questioned but Nirina. Yeah, I've decided to stay in town for some time and I want to do something worthwhile. We haven't seen each other in years, old friend. Right. Hilda said while winking to Nirina. Nirina said eh? Alright. And sipped in her coffee. I don't know what are you two planning, but first when you wink try to hide it, and second it won't go your way if you are planning to make a comeback at me. I made my statement. The axe. Hilda demanded. Well if Nirina approved she can teach me fighting then I'm not going to argue. I go to the axe and grab it, this thing is not light at all. I find a good spot to grab on to make the weight more balanced, I squat then push my legs up to stand. I made it but the weight was something else. This battle axe is classified as a two-handed weapon, preferred by grunts and it has a very high attack power in the right hands. Good put it back. You passed. Hilda said after she saw what she wanted to see, I think it's about the balance thing. I will teach you for few days but you have to train and find someone to point out your mistakes, I know you like magic. And fighting with a weapon might not be to your liking but that's the Nord way, get it. Hilda made a commander speech but yeah I am good. I was planning to learn how to fight properly anyway. Is there a place we can borrow? Hilda looked at Nirina and asked. Let John take you at the playing yard. No one should be there now but don't make too much noise, and John close the door after you leave. Nirina was already going to make a check on the place so she got going first. She looked at Hilda and said and if you met with an old hagraven called Grelid don't kill her. Let John trash talk her to death. Then she left. Hilda was puzzled but I said it's like that. And told her about the thing. Hilda was an interesting fellow, just from me explaining she wanted to kill Grelid already, I am starting to like her. We headed to the yard. It was in front of the orphanage and it also a part that appeared in game. Good thing is it's a bit vaster in reality and has a high wall. Hilda asked me to bring an armor of my size and other training gear. I ran back to Balimund and borrowed the stuff. The lessons of Wolfer was going well and mine will start just now. Hilda tried the dull iron gear for a bit and nodded. She faced me and tell me to make a stance. Left leg at the front, right at the back, sword with both hands and my head was guarded. That was something I remember from my past life so I stood like that. Hilda looked and pointed my mistakes in the stance and told me how to move, her way was flexible even though she wore heavy armor. I had a good lesson from afternoon till sunset, I was already beaten up black and blue, sub how cruel. Next day was the same. Third day Hilda was really targeting my head. Hey, my handsome face can't afford a scar. The fourth day, I already became good at dodging. That day Nurina came and told us she asked someone she knows to train me after Hilda's departure. Fifth, sixth and seventh day went well for me. I really liked Hilda, her way in fighting was wild, precise, and fast. She also could use magic to some extent which surprised me, it was restoration school magic, yet I had to turn into the teacher and point out some of her shortcomings. She told me her husband insisted that she must learn it when she was pregnant with her child. I would actually do the same if I were him. Those who train on certain art get their bodies affected by it. Like for example if you trained yourself on healing magic you will tend to have a healthy body, that's why Nords only liked the restoration school and they really respected healers, in the same time they hated any other magic. Following the same rule, training other arts made some effects on the users. Training fire magic will make you resist fire better and have endurance equivalent to the health attribute. Training frost magic will give you more stamina as ice affects stamina badly so resisting ice is actually good for stamina. Same goes with lightning magic and magicka. Conjuring raises the strength of soul and gives more magicka to the users. Illusion grants a stronger mentality and finally alteration makes the body stronger. Training martial arts will make you monsterly powerful. That is the same as earth but I lady noticed something different. Warriors are ridiculously strong, not just man level strong but superman level strong. They tend not to notice it in this world but people trained in combat can carry big rocks so easily. Same goes for those who train the stealth arts. Their presence is weak and they are super fast, some can reach the speed of beasts. That also explains my good magic control, I trained mysticism as the one true magic school and made the other schools only aspects originated from it. My training on mysticism with my theories and discoveries made my magic capacity and control that of a high elf, I think if my theory went public it will cause a grand commotion and superpowers in this world will try to get hold of me. A slash n, the MC will not be up rest assured. I also read that magic tends to make the people live longer, a magician Dunmer can live more than a thousand year. Which also means as long as the body is more trained and tempered by magic it will live longer. Due to the magic element in this world, human races in Nirn live longer than humans in Earth. Even Nords who are magic haters live up to 150 years. All that was written in my note in my otherworldly native language. Today Hilda was leaving Riften, she seemed to me that she has some dispute with some powerful, so she tends to lay low all time. I really had to see that amazing teacher off today so I woke up early. I saw her walking after Nirina while being clad in a big cloak and a hood, her axe was surely under her cloak. I went after them and wanted to say hello, but I heard them talking while it felt like they were sneaking. I hid my presence like I learned from my thief friends and eavesdropped on them, it wasn't really intentional but I was a bit unsettled. I am sorry, sister Nirina. I can't go and see him. I don't think I am strong enough for it. Hilda's voice was sad yet she was trying to keep quiet. Seems like she was here for someone and didn't get to see them. 
Don't worry, your son is my son and he won't be harmed as long as I walk this Niran. Niran's voice was warm and assuring as ever. But, wait, your son, my son, what's going on here? Give that to him when he wakes up, it's his father's. Our friends will send you the note they kept. You will know what to do with it. Hilda's voice firmed and she exchanged farewells with Nirina. I saw her give her an amulet but I didn't recognize it in the dark. I sneaked back to my room while thinking. How was that possible? Hilda's son is in the orphanage. Why is that? What is she so afraid to leave her son here? The ideas that popped into my head were crazy after crazy. I can't make heads and tails out of this. I have to see who will receive this amulet from Nirina. If Hilda's son is here then I'll have to take care of him for her. She is my teacher after all. Yet for her to stay away from the children and keep watching from afar, this must be really hard for a mother's heart. I'll wait. I'll wait. I waited. Everyone is up. Nurina is organizing the kids for the breakfast. Here it is, the amulet. She takes it out. She is starting to walk. No, where is Hilda's son? Don't, don't point that at me. I don't want to know. Don't say it. I can't even look up. Hey, John. Sorry about it but before morning Hilda left early. She asked me to give you this. Nurina said in a soft voice. Please don't be the amulet. Please don't. I don't want to know, please. I have to look up and see but I don't want. Hey, John. Don't be angry at Hilda. Listen she really wanted you to see her off but she was in a hurry and had to leave early. Nurina voice was warm but hesitating see it's a blessed amulet. An amulet? Why? Why did it have to be like this? I looked up and saw it, it was indeed an amulet. An amulet blessed by Talos at that. The amulet of Talos, that was the name of it. So that how it was. I get it now. No, I am not angry. I took the amulet while saying. It was a bit different than the others. I felt more power coming from it. It wasn't an ordinary amulet. But I don't really care. I noticed Hilda's hair. I also noticed her eyes. But why was it like this? I didn't want to believe it. Wasn't this just a mod? Why is it like this? I have a relative? I have a mother? I look at the amulet again. Damn it. This is not really what I thought it would be like. What is going on with this world? 